and my wife thought she had the most expensive rock in the house. Hello everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We're going to continue our machine alignment series again. This time we're going to talk about straightness. If you recall in our other videos, we leveled the machine and then we made sure that our table is parallel and true to our XY motion plane. Now we're going to talk about the straightness of our axes. So as our table is moving in X or moving in Y, is it moving in a straight line or is it moving like a snake? And that's important if you're trying to machine you know, long runs down an edge of a part and you need to hold some accuracies there. If you have a boxway machine, the adjustment procedure for straightness is going to be different than the linear machine that I'm going to show here. Uh, boxway machines for straightness, you have to do a lot of tweaking, adjusting, and maybe some scraping. Uh, where this machine, a linear way machine, we can just tweak some set screws and some socket head cap screws, and we can straighten the machine out. And I'll show you those techniques on how to straighten out a machine if you find that it's not running straight. So let's go to the machine and I'll show you how to measure our straightness. Now we are going to measure straightness of our machine. And I'm going to show you how to measure straightness on X. Uh, measuring straightness on Y is exactly the same. You just rotate the stone. Now to measure straightness, the best way that I found to do it is to have a good uh, calibrated straight edge. Now, this is a granite square. Not only is it straight, but it's also perpendicular to within less than a ten thousandths of an inch. Now this stone has three calibrated uh, faces to it. The bottom face is calibrated, this side, and then this side. So we can use this stone to measure straightness, and then in the next video, we're going to measure squareness. We have the stone sitting on three gauge blocks. These are just uh, one, two, three blocks. But they've been taken and they've been surface ground very accurately so they're a matched set. The reason why we want to do that is it tr tends to average out any discrepancies in the table. If you recall in one of our previous videos, we do have about five ten thousandths of an inch of variation in the table uh, just due to wear and age. Once the stone is in the table, now it's just a matter of running the axis that you're testing back and forth, and then you can square up uh, the stone just as you would your vise. So we're just going to run x back and forth, and then we're just—it's just sitting there. So you just have to lightly tap on one end of it with your finger. I tap on the light side because then that tends to make it pivot over here. So just as when you're squaring a vise, you kind of snug one side and then use that as your zero and then you adjust the other side accordingly. So let's get the stone running true uh, to the x-axis. I already cheated some and I got it close. So we're using the, uh, the same indicator again, which is super, super, super accurate. Uh, remember, each one of these numbers is about four ten thousandths of an inch. Each hash mark is about 75 millionths of an inch. Okay. So we're at zero on this side. So now we'll just run the length. We're just a hair too close. So let's just give it a little tiny tap. There we go. You can see, you can see how easy it moves. So now we've run uh, about 16 inches, this is a 16 inch stone, we've run the majority of our X travel and you can see uh, just as we were straightening the stone, I, already, I had it pretty close already, uh, that our X axis is extremely straight. Uh, we're straight within a ten thousandths of an inch or so. So again, each little tiny hash mark is uh, 75 millionths. So 
one hash mark or on one number is four ten thousandths of an inch. So let's run down the edge again. Oops, we don't want to go off the stone. So this time we'll run a little slower. And you can see as we're running the x-axis along, that needle is not moving. And that's good. Uh, the reason why it's that good is I spent a lot of time adjusting these x-linear slides to get it in that good. Uh, most machines that you buy used, uh, I would be very surprised if they are this straight. So we are within the accuracy of our, of our stone. Okay, so that's a full travel. You can see that our x-axis on this machine is beautifully straight. It's almost perfectly straight. The y-axis uh, is almost identical. So I'm just going to show you x for the purpose of the video. Uh, you can take my word for it that y is pretty good. We'll actually get an indication of how straight y is uh, in the next video when we talk about squareness. Now your machine, when you get it, may not be as straight as this machine is. If it's a boxed way machine, they're a little bit more difficult to get straight in. Uh, you're going to have to make some adjustments uh, with the shims in the, in the gibs, uh, and you may have to do uh, some scraping. Uh, it may need new turkite, which is the low friction material that they put on the metal uh, to make the axes slide better. So boxways are, are kind of their own animal. Uh, one of the reasons why I specifically bought a linear machine, and I like a linear machine, is that if I lose a, an axis and my rails get messed up, I can buy a new set of rails, I can bolt them in, and you have a brand new machine. And you can get this machine to factory tolerances again. Uh, with boxways, it takes a lot more work to recondition them and resurface them. It's a lot more money. The drawback to linear machines, especially if you have a ball bearing linear machine, is that they're not as rigid. So you're not going to be able to take as heavy cut and heavy materials. Uh, I mostly machine aluminum, so it's not a problem for me. Uh, a lot of the newer machines are linear machines, uh, but they don't use balls. Uh, they use cylinder type bearings. So instead of having a ball with a finite contact point, uh, you have a cylinder, or basically it looks like a can rolling around in there, and you've got the contact area, the whole length of that, of that can. Uh, so let's talk about how you adjust these linear ways to get them straight if they're not straight. So we're looking up underneath the table and you can see this is the truck and the truck is bolted to the table. Uh, the bolts are on the bottom here and I'll tell you the bolts on the inside are kind of a trick to get at. Now you can see just under the truck here and then there's another one here and they're all down the length of the table. Those are little tiny set screws. And the way that you adjust these rails is first you install them with cap screws. So there's cap screws underneath these little protectors. And you want to just, just barely snug those cap screws down. You don't want to reef them down or tighten them real tight. You just want to barely snug them. And then what you want to do is you just want to touch the rail with this set screw. And what that will do is it's going to push the rail up against the inside. So if you noticed on, let me get a good shot of it here, this inside rail is the precision ground surface. So this is the reference point for the machine. This is what you use to align it. Now this machine only has two rails, so the alignment uh, isn't as difficult. 
as a multi-rail machine. Some machines will have three or four or five rails if they're large machines. So while you're adjusting the front rail, the back rail, this is the master rail, so then this one would be the slave rail. This one you want just loose. You just want the cap screws tight enough to hold it down so it's not moving around, but you want it to float. The other thing you want to do is you want to have your trucks on the back rail loose so they float. On the front side, these trucks down here, we want to just snug them up. Okay? So now what that will do is that will get you into, into a position where you can measure the straightness of this rail and then be able to dynamically adjust it to dial it in. Now, keep in mind, if you uh, tighten this set screw here, it's going to push the rail into the reference rail harder and deflect it. Now, you know, you, you look at these rails and they're, you know, one inch bar stock of, you know, hardened steel, but you put, you know, a couple of inch pounds of torque on that little tiny set screw, that rail will move. And keep in mind, as you tighten this one, it's going to push it in here, but then the rail's going to want to pop out a little bit farther down the line. So there's a lot of trial and error with this and it takes a little technique uh, to get it right and that's why it took me so long to get mine right because I'm I was learning the technique as I went along. So then for your initial setup what you want to do is you want to hang a dial indicator off of the table and then put it right on the rail here and then you want to measure it as you go along down the rail. And you'll be able to watch that dial indicator wagging back and forth as you move the table, and that will help you straighten the rail on the initial install. After you have the rail relatively straight to itself, that's when you want to bring out your precision straight edge and then finish dialing in from there. So that's the adjustment procedure uh, for these linear rails. Once you have the master set and it's perfectly straight, now what you want to do is you want to get out a dial indicator again and hang it off of the table and then go to the surface of this rail. And then you want to straighten that rail relative to this rail. So once you have the master straight, that's when you want to do the slave rail. After the rails are straight, that's when you can torque down the trucks and then put the trucks in. Now also, anytime you're tightening these cap bolts, you absolutely have to use a torque wrench. You cannot guess at the tightness of the torque with these. If you over torque these rails, what you'll do is you'll actually crush that rail down and tend to mushroom it out. Again, even though it's steel, everything moves. And we have to be careful we don't over torque it and mess up our straightness. With our straightness procedure, we do need an extra piece of tooling that's going to cost us some money. We need a precision straight edge. Uh, I recommend just buying a precision square so that you get the benefit of having a straight edge and a square at the same time. I find having a precision square is the easiest way to do our next step, which is going to be squaring the movement of X so that it's perfectly perpendicular to the movement of Y. Squareness, as we mentioned before, is a lot is easy to overlook and it's an important adjustment to make. I hope you enjoyed the video on straightness. Now that our machine is running straight and true, our next video is going to talk about squareness. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again.